Here we go, video number three. Video number one, you manage your grip, you're probably gripping the gun and control and recoil like you've never done before. Video number two, we put that together with trigger management, so now you're managing the trigger better than you ever had before. Video number three, I'm going to show you how to draw the handgun and improve your draw process. Now this is the concealed real deal draw process. I mean, this is my Wilson Combat compact handgun. That's what I'm carrying. Um, I actually have a keeper's holster. I carry this and typically a Safari Land Model 18. I carry in the appendix position, which to some is a little bit riskier, but it allows me to do more things when I'm seated in a vehicle or in a restaurant, you know, booth during a lot of meetings or in a chair in an office, et cetera, et cetera. So it's my preferred position. But I will tell you, if you carry in the, the appendix position, you need to have some specific training and follow some specific safety protocol just because of where the gun is potentially pointing when you reholster. And I'll talk to you about that here in just a second. So let's talk about the draw process. Now, when I'm concealing my handgun, a lot of times I'll, you know, I'm traveling around town wearing a polo shirt or a t-shirt that mimics this shirt right here. Now, this particular shirt design is what I call a closed front garment. So when we're sweeping a closed front garment, we're sweeping any kind of garment that doesn't have an opening up the front like a jacket. If you wear a jacket, like a suit jacket or a winter jacket or a vest or whatever, well that will be an open front garment sweep, which is the same process that I'm going to teach you and that it's actually an easier sweep, but the same mechanics apply. So let's talk about the sweep process itself. There are a lot of people out there that teach what I call a rip and grip, where they rip the clothing out of the way and they grip the handgun. And they're using that support hand to rip in a manner that gets it out of the way very, very fast. And I, I agree that the draw process is very fast. But the problem with the rip and grip is that it assumes in your training drills, um, in myelinate skill sets, believing that you're going to have your support hand to rip and grip. But of course, if I'm in a parking lot and I've got my flashlight and I'm searching also and there's a guy with a gun, I've got to be able to sweep and grip with my strong hand only to get the gun out. Imagine also a second consideration, if I picked up my seven-year-old daughter and I'm carrying her to safety because craziness happened in the Walmart parking lot, well, I don't want to think about sweeping with my left hand. I can't drop the kid and run, right? I can't drop the kid and draw the handgun. So I may need to get the handgun out with, with one hand only. And last but not least, in some of our close quarter stuff that we do, a lot of times my body is pinned up against another person, so I want to have the ability to sweep and grip with my strong hand only because my support hand is going to be occupied with them in a certain position we teach. We'll talk to you about that in a future video sometime. So, sweep and grip. When I'm actually doing my sweep and grip, I'm going to use my forefinger hook, and when, when, when I reach for the garment itself, when one hand reaches, they both move at the same time. And what I want to do is I want to get the fingers around the garment, reaching inside the shirt itself, and I want to keep my fingers kind of loose. I don't want to grab it at this point in time, because if I grab it and pull it out of the way, I'm actually, you know, assuming the material is going to stretch enough. What I want to do is I want to actually let the material travel through my hand. It kind of slides through my hand. And when I sweep, basically both hands are moving at the same time and the same speed. So no matter where you came from, you know, from your defensive position, or maybe your hands relaxed aside, when both hands move, they move at the same time and the same speed. Now when I sweep and grip, I do use my support hand to assist and hold the shirt up, but if my support hand is out of operation, I can still do my full sweep and grip without my support hand, okay? Now, I'm going to teach you a little secret. When I sweep, I'm making contact with the backs of my knuckles and my body here. And what that allows me to do is actually travel up and across my shirt, and now I'm going to do a little thing called the, the finger switch. So I'm going to take the backs of my knuckles and I'm going to switch to my thumb. And notice, you're probably figuring this out already, what that does for me is it keeps my shirt from falling back over my gun. So I could slowly move my thumb right down and drive that hand straight up high on the handgun. And remember, that's the key to building that grip process, is driving that hand high up the handgun. And notice my shirt can't beat my thumb down there. If I simply throw the shirt out of the way and then try to grab the handgun, I'm going to end up grabbing the shirt at the same time. So I'm going to do my sweep, finger switch, thumb drives down and in, and notice where my support hand is when I do the draw process, okay? Now, when the gun actually comes out of the holster, the gun is going to come out of the holster and it's going to start to travel straight toward the target. It's at that point in time I would hit my Judy Chops button. If you remember drill number one and two, which position do we start from? You got it. It was our Judy Chop spot. And from there, I'm simply mimicking what you've already probably done a hundred times. I'm extending the gun 
prepping the trigger, firing the shots, okay? So the full draw process, when one hand moves, both hands move, four finger sweep and grip, index high on the handgun. Notice where my support hand is indexed. It's right here along my belly. I place it flat along my belly with my four fingers together because that's exactly how that hand is gonna go on the handgun. Draw the handgun out. Of course, safety comes off here on my 1911. Press, fire my shot. Okay, four finger sweep and grip. Now, one thing you may do, and you wanna be careful of this, you may be inefficient with your movement. You may be bringing the gun out in an arcing movement. We call this scooping or shoveling. Some of you may be bringing it up over your eyesight line. We call this fishing, you know, it's like casting a fishing pole. And just think about this, anytime you're drawing your handgun, uh, in a spontaneous event, time is very important to you. So if I'm wasting time, you know, scooping or fishing, then that's a half a second you're losing on your draw process. How much would you pay for a half a second in a gunfight? I'm guessing you'd probably pay for quite, pay quite a bit of money for it. So don't be inefficient in your movements when you're drawing your handgun. Now, another key thing about this is, when I'm doing this draw process, I've got to get both hands in action. If, for example, I'm telling someone, hey, you know, get back, and I leave this hand out there, while my strong hand reaches back and draws the handgun, I'm going to be building my grip out here, which is not going to be an efficient uh, grip building process. I want to build the grip back here. So even if I were giving you commands, if you're the bad guy, and maybe I reach down to start this sweep process, which is probably a pretty smart, smart move, I would get the second hand back to do my draw process. So when you practice the next drill, we're going to practice from three positions. Number one, where your hands are relaxed the sides, we are going to sweep, grip, do your draw process. Number two, where your hands are somewhere up between center lines. So you're talking to someone, you've got your hands up, you're getting nervous. For whatever reason, you're in what we call a fence position. So once again, both hands move, draw process, and actually shoot the gun. And number three, I call it my cheater position, the gunfight cheater position, where bad things are happening, you think you may have to draw the handgun. I know that the garment sweep is the one that I may potentially make a mistake on. So I'm going to get down there. This hand is still up. I can strike with it. I can defend with it. I can do a lot of good things with it. But I'm getting that second hand in action and it's already on the garment. And now I haven't brandished yet. They don't see my gun. They don't know I have a gun. They probably don't even know what I'm doing down here. But when I actually go to sweep, my sweep is much faster because I've got half of the work done. So when you're practicing the next drill, you're going to practice from those three positions, okay? As always, we're going to do a live fire drill. In this live fire drill, you're going to fire through what I call a progression of four. A progression of four is draw process, fire one round. Next draw process, you're going to fire two rounds. Next one, three. Next one, four. Next one, three. One, two, three, four. Three, two, one. What that does is prevents you from always assuming you're going to fire two rounds, two rounds, two rounds. A lot of people get in a bad habit of firing two rounds when in reality they should be firing X number of rounds and always following through on the sights and on the trigger just in case that guy pops back up, okay? Here in a second, I'm gonna show you the drill. Okay, time for the full draw process drill. Don't forget, we're gonna be firing through a progression of four on the targets. When I do my rounds, one, two, three, four, I'll do a very quick scan, but I'm abbreviating it for the video process because I don't want you to have to watch me scan for two or three minutes. But I am looking behind me and I'm thinking about always scanning three things. Number one, the threat, if they're down. Number two, my environment. Number three, you may want to scan and check your weapon status to top it back off. For example, if you carry a five or six round small gun of some sort and you get in a fight and you're not sure how many rounds you shot, get it reloaded because you don't know where knucklehead number two is, okay? So let me go ahead and load the handgun and we'll start working this drill. Don't forget, when you're learning skills, if you're doing things, you want to make sure that you're doing them at a deliberate pace where you could truly learn from that pace. So if this is new to you, well then take it slow first. Now don't forget also that eventually you've got to push your pace. If you don't try to go fast, you're never going to become fast. But all that speed can be practiced literally hundreds if not thousands of times in dry fire without ever firing a live round, okay? So remember, three hand starting positions and a progression of four. So my first starting position, my hands are relaxed the sides, sweep, grip the handgun, fire my shot. Notice how I'm following through on the sights and trigger for about a second or two, making sure he's down, and my scan. Now for you appendix guys and gals out there, I'm going to literally, deliberately keep that muzzle away from my body. Finger is nowhere near the trigger, so I'm, I'm almost bending backward when I reholster it, so it's nice and safe. I recommend you try that. 
Learned that from Todd Green, a buddy of mine. All right, position number two, hands in a fence position. Now, if the wind is blowing like it is today, this may be a little bit more complicated for me to get the sweep, but guess what? I've got to fight my way through it. So, two rounds from the fence position, sweep and grip. Good shots. Notice how I'm following through in the sights and trigger for a couple seconds before my scan process. All right, round number three. My cheater position, hey man, get back. I'm telling him to get back, hands up. He doesn't really see what I'm doing, but when I do this, the second hand has to come back to fire those shots, just like that. Following through, scan process. I know I've shot a lot of rounds and I'm not sure how many. I'm safe in my environment. I'm gonna go ahead and do a tack load here to top the gun back off. And notice when I do this, I don't have to look at my mag pouch or the gun, there's no reason to. Now, when you're reholstering, if you choose to look down there, because you want to make sure that your shirt and your garment is not inside your trigger guard, by all means do so, keep yourself safe. Most people shoot themselves when they're reholstering, not when they're doing anything advanced, okay? All right, here we go, same position. This is gonna be my fourth repetition, four rounds. Okay, that's pretty good recoil control. That feels good to me. I saw my front sight climb a little high right on one shot and I looked down there. I got a good hit on target, but it was a little bit outside of that zero zone. So I may assess and say, hey man, I need to grip the gun a little bit harder. I need to make sure to lock my wrist tendons to build a proper grip, etc. Okay, switch to my hand position, three rounds. He's down, scan process. Once again, two rounds, shoot to position. He's down, notice how I'm not bringing the gun back very quickly each repetition, okay? Last but not least, one round. He's down, and that's it, folks. So there's your draw process. There's how to train it. Make sure to try it dry fire first before you do it live fire, but now you've got your live fire drill and you've got your work cut out for you. So you gotta start working your draw process. And don't forget, you've gotta practice this from your exact carry gear with your exact carry gear uh, and holster and gun and stuff exactly how you would set it up in real life. Don't come to the range with the range holster and some sort of fake range vest on, you know, like uh, the one I'm going to use in my IDPA match tomorrow. Carry your practice exactly how you're going to carry, and, uh, and that's going to help you develop those skills exactly like you're going to need them in real life.